السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those who have through the centuries studied the deen, put it into practice, conveyed it to others in a way that it has come to us. Beloved brothers and sisters, that statement I've just made as the opening statement, are we included in it? We always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless those who have passed the message down the ladder. When I say down the ladder, I'm talking of the ladder of time. And if we are not from amongst those, then there is something wrong. What have I done to preserve the deen and to convey it to the next generation? Every one of us is responsible. Kullukum ra. وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ We know the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for his flock. I know that this hadith is very broad but we have a flock. We have people whom we are responsible for. Our children, those we interact with, the rest of humanity. We will be asked questions, those we worked with. Those we interacted with on a day-to-day -day basis. We had so many friends whom we benefited with so much. Perhaps online or perhaps in real life. Notice I said online and in real life because online is not necessarily real life. You need to know that. I just received a message a few minutes ago from a sister of mine. Meaning my own sister. One mother, one father. <laughs> and she tells me there will come a time. I had to clear that inshallah. She tells me, it's just a, something, you, some of you might have seen it. There will come a time when YouTube, Facebook and Twitter are all going to unite and create one big time-wasting place which is worth nothing. And do you know what it will be called? You twit face. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allah protect us. Allah protect us. Allah safeguard us. We don't want to be from amongst those. The point I was making is, we have a responsibility even to those whom we interact with online. What did you do to leave a mark on their or in their lives or to leave them spiritually or religiously or with any form of knowledge more or should I say on a higher level than they were before you came into their lives? What did you do? And in order to get that, you will need to do something about your own life to start with. Some people and you watch their accounts, you know, not to say we sit and watch them, but sometimes it's interesting to look at how people interact. They've said absolutely nothing positive or nothing beneficial throughout their whole chat with people over the last year or two. Nothing beneficial. How did they benefit from you? Wallahi, they will ask you on the day of Qiyamah, you will be asked, how was your relation with X, Y and Z? Only a mature person who understands what productivity is all about and what the responsibility is all about shall be able to convey messages at every opportunity he or she has. So this is why when we want blessings upon ourselves, if we were to be from amongst those who are sharp enough to realize that time is limited, as we said, for us, time is limited. And make use of every moment to benefit and to benefit others. In a way that tomorrow, they will be able to pass it on to the next generations as well. And you know what? You receive a free reward. Free reward. A lot of the times we get questions of people who want to ask about scams. And you know, quick ways of making money. And they tell you, okay, if you enter this. Uh, and you have just put in, for example, $500. And when you introduce someone else, you get $50 for everyone you introduce. 
So when you introduce 10 people, you've got your money back. And when each one is then introduced to another person, you get $5 out of every person that the person who you introduced introduces. <laughs> and then you get two and a half dollars out of every person that is introduced by the one who was introduced by the one whom you introduced and so on. You see how it's going on and on. In, in such a way that within a year, you will have $75,000. Is that halal or haram? Question mark. You know what? The answer to that is you're a fool. That's the answer. <laughs> If it was that easy to make money, why would they need you in the picture? Really, they would keep it for themselves. This is what we tell people. A man says, you know what? Uh, give me your money, I'll double it in a week. Well, brother, you're driving a Toyota. You haven't yet doubled anything. So how are you going to double, double my money? Allahu Akbar. Yet, we are quick to look at the schemes and the scams and to get hooked onto these Ponzi scams where you lose your money after some time. It's just a pyramid where... One little block goes missing and everyone comes crashing. But do you know what? In terms of knowledge and Islamic knowledge, it works with a 100% return, not only for you, but for anyone down the chain. Listen to the hadith. Man sanna sunnatan hasanatan falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawmil qiyamati la yanqusu dhalika min ujurihim shay'a. What a powerful narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should be knowing these off by heart. Whoever sets a good example and setting a good example is not only in your character and conduct. It includes anything positive that you've disseminated, that has come from you, that others have benefited from you. The knowledge that you have passed on is also considered sunnah hasana because you have started this trend of passing the knowledge on. Although it came from before you, but the hadith says when you continue it, you get a full reward of it, of having done the good deed, a full reward of having passed it on, a full reward for anyone who is practicing upon it, a full reward for them having passed it on subsequently to someone else, a full reward for anyone else who has practiced upon it, and a full reward for them having passed it on to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation, until we get to time unlimited. Time unlimited meaning until Allah decides that the earth should now come to an end. Subhanallah. 100%. So imagine, I was sitting once and I was thinking for a moment, imagine if we had a machine to gauge the amount of hasana or reward I am getting or you are getting when you've taught someone to read Quran. So for every letter they get 10, you already have 10. The one who taught you has 10 for every letter. And you know what? On average, sit and count. One page has approximately 1,200 letters. One page has approximately 1,200 letters. Plus minus. So for every page, multiply that by 10. What do you get? Approximately 12,000. Am I right? 12,000 rewards you get when you read. The one who taught you gets it on your behalf and they get it when they read. The one whom you have taught will get it and you will and the one who taught you and the one who taught them and it all goes back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if there was any computer that had to measure the rewards of a singular person it would burn out believe me you would need zegabytes you know what's a zegabyte right at the end of the alphabet <laughs> we started with <laughs> you know I come from Zimbabwe so we normally support the Z mashallah <laughs> We're at the bottom of the alphabet. Walillahi alhamdulillah minna. We thank Allah for that. So imagine it would burn out the computers because the reward that is being achieved one after the other. What is this? You're making use of time. You're actually maturing as time passes. You're understanding that this is my duty and you are achieving something. There's no point in understanding what's your duty, but you haven't achieved anything. So remember, be positive. Don't waste time. Time wasting is something that is from the shaitan. He makes you think, I'll do this tomorrow. Not tomorrow, today, now. Right now, you made an intention, change now. That's what we always say. Change now. Because if we are not going to change now, we will not be able to mature with time because we've allowed a gap between the time we wanted to change and the time we ultimately changed. Even if it is just a few hours, it's not good enough. Allahu Akbar. I always say the messages that come to you are limited. When I say limited, I mean there is a fixed number of messages that you will have in your life. Did you know that? 
Did you know that? Look at Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. وَأُوحِيَ إِلَىٰ نُوحٍ أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ It was revealed to Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. After 950 odd years, it was revealed to him, O oh Nuh, nobody from your people shall now believe from amongst those who have not yet believed. What does that mean? A deeper look at the verse means the amount of messages that you had to convey is over. So now leave them alone. No point in calling people when Allah says they're not going to turn. Imagine. What happened to Musa alayhi salatu was salam? He made a dua for the destruction of Fir'aun. After a long, long time. And him and his brother Harun, may peace be upon them. May peace be upon us all. If you have struggled and strived to learn knowledge, to put it into practice, even if it means little bits of it, and to give it to even just your children, may the peace and blessings be upon you. Every time it is said, you are included. Because you've now added yourself in the chain of knowledge. In the chain of knowledge. So here, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, after saying, Oh Allah, destroy this man who is only full of destruction himself. You find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, and to his brother Harun, may peace be upon them. قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says to them, Your call has been answered, both of you. The call, the prayer you made to us has been answered. So be steadfast. And don't follow the path of those who don't know. Just wait. It's a matter of time. And what will happen? He will be destroyed. The point being made here, like we learn more clearly from that of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam's story, where he was told, now spend your time building the ark. Whether they laugh at you or not, don't worry. Use your time positively. Build the ark. Prepare for what is to come. We are telling you they're going to be destroyed. And we are also telling you they will be destroyed with water. And we are also telling you that you save yourself. And now that you've continued telling them for so many years, we are telling you how many ever have accepted, they have accepted. The new people, nobody's going to come in. So just hold back. You don't need to call them anymore. It's over. Still, he called his son at a certain stage. And I'm sure you know that the verse of the Quran speaks about how he was saw to see his son not in the ark when the waves began to come and he says Allahu Akbar Nuh alayhi salatu was salam calls his own son and he says don't be from amongst those don't be from amongst those and his son says Sa'awi ila jabalin min al -ma. Oh my father what do you know I'm going to climb the mountain. I'm going to climb the mountain. It will save me from water. But this is your father. He's calling you towards Allah. He's calling you towards being saved. What was it costing him to jump into the ark? This is the height of stupidity. And this is what sometimes we do. And I want to today draw a line between or draw a parallel, an example between what we've just heard about Nuh alayhi salatu was salam and how it applies in my life and yours. You see, here's the son. Logically, if he jumped into the ark, he was not losing anything, was he? Nothing. If there was going to be a flood, he was going to be saved. If there was not going to be a flood, he would have just had a good time in the ark. That's it. <laughs> Counting the animals, I guess. <laughs> but... He did not use his logic. Now that he's out, you see the probabilities. We need to think when there are probabilities and possibilities, you need to save yourself totally by using common logic, that common sense. Sometimes we don't, and I'm going to get to it just now, but let's go back. If he, he was now out of the ark, so there's a possibility of being drowned or not being drowned. Am I right? So now that he's out, if the drowning, if the flood does come, he's dead. And if it doesn't come, if maybe if it doesn't come, he's saved. One of the possibilities is he's dead. Out of two possibilities, one of them is he's dead. 
And this side here, had he jumped in, both possibilities are, he's saved. Are you following what I'm saying? So why didn't his logic lead him to doing that which either way he would be saved? Now let's draw it into our own lives. Sometimes we have something that we're doing. And you know, half the world is telling you this is wrong. This is wrong. You're not supposed to be doing this. And you're not supposed to be engaged in this and so on. And they are showing you evidence to prove that this is wrong and this is not supposed to be the case. And, you, and the other half is saying, no, you must do it. And you, they also say, look, although the Messenger وسلم, did not do it, but there's no harm in doing it. Now that statement, I want to ask you a question. If someone says the Messenger وسلم, did not do this act of worship, but there is no harm in doing it. You know, that is equivalent to telling you just stay out of the ark. There is no harm in staying out of the ark. It's the same statement. Why? Because if you do it, there's a risk of going to Jannah or Jahannam. Am I right? And if you don't do it, you, you, you're definitely not going to head to Jahannam because you, if you left it out, you know he didn't do it. So it can't be something that is so desperately needed in the Sharia. I won't die without it. Allahu Akbar. I hope you understand the logic here. Whereas when you do it, like some people debate over little items and I tell them, brother, why don't you do those things that there is no debate about? Why don't you keep yourself, steer yourself clear from controversy? Why don't you do that? If, if you know that there is a, a proper legitimate argument of something and people are telling you this is not from the Quran and not from the Sunnah, the best option is you know that those things that are from the Quran and are from the Sunnah, the whole world agrees on them. Allahu Akbar. So why do we want to enter territory that is so disputed when we have not yet gone into territory that is not disputed. Look at the logic. And then we read the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, and we say, you know, poor fellow, he drowned. This, the father says, قَالَ لَا عَاصِمَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَ الْمَوْجُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ Allahu Akbar. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is still telling his son that today nobody shall be saved except those whom Allah has had mercy upon. You can climb your mountain and you can even hang on the clouds. Nothing will happen. Nobody is going to be saved besides those whom Allah has had mercy upon. And suddenly there was a wave between them and he was taken away from amongst those who were drowned. So how many of us are drowning? Drowning in what? Engaging in futile items, things that are not from Islam and we're calling them Islam. That is as, as big a risk as it was for the son of the Prophet Nuh or Noah, may peace be upon him. It's the same risk. He might have been drowned physically with water. We are drowned sometimes spiritually where it means we are gone. We engage in something that ma anzal Allahu biha min sultan. Allah did not reveal authority for us to engage in that type of item considering it an act of worship and so on so this is a lesson to be drawn as time passes should we be drawing closer to Allah or further away the more we have of that which is besides Allah the less we will have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more we increase in our lives the devil the less we will be having of the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have a capacity and that capacity, if you fill it up with something negative, will you have space for anything positive? It's like a seesaw. You're either this side or that side. Allahu Akbar. The more you have on one side, the, the less you have on the other. This is why when you jump on a seesaw, make, make sure the other brother on the other side is not too heavy or you'll only be up there. You'll never come down. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Unless he's gracious enough to flick his feet up and spring you down. Allahu Akbar. I hope you're picturing what I'm picturing. <laughs> so my beloved brothers and sisters what we need to know is as time passes what are we doing with it how have we learned lessons from the past what has happened to us we've heard so many talks I tell you if in your destiny you were meant to listen to 5622 talks who knows if this is 5611 already you've just got a few more left and after that written off may Allah protect us we are lucky we don't know the figures if we had known the figures by now, we probably would be saying, you know what, I'm going to get 5,200 or 5,622 uh, reminders. Let me not listen to any reminders. Put cotton wool in my ears so I can prolong my life. That's what some people would do. And Allah says, he has kept the knowledge of death 
away from us. The knowledge, even the predestiny, no one knows exactly where we are heading in, in terms of what will happen to me even in the next second. Allah knows it alone. But what I do know is I need to try. I need to make an effort. And Allah's mercy will definitely be showered upon myself and yourselves. May Allah have mercy on us. So you have people whom, mashallah, they have today and tomorrow and the following day, they're equal. This is correct and can be correct on all levels. You have a person who reads five salah a day. Yesterday he read five salah. Today he read five salah. Tomorrow he is going to read five salah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a good Muslim according to him. And alhamdulillah, we would also think the same. But we would like to say that as a Muslim, that's not good enough. Which means now that you've read five, start improving your quality. Do something that is better than yesterday, today. And do something tomorrow that will be better than today. If you don't do that, then you haven't learned the lesson of life. And here we draw another example. Everyone loves examples. If you were to have a salary and your salary is $300, let's make it interesting, an hour. $300 an hour. And you know, when, when I said $300, a lot of people were looking at me as though that's nothing, you know. <laughs> so we made it more, just wait and listen to the end of the statement. $300 an hour and you're sitting at that and a year has passed, two years have passed, no promotion, no extra monies, no nothing. What would you feel? You'd say, no ways. Last year, I was a 300 and I was a manager. This year, I'm a 300, I'm a manager. I want to become a senior manager. I don't want to sweat like this. And so, so either your post changes or you wish for it or you want it or you actively work towards it or you apply for it. Let's hope you don't become jealous against someone and try and knock them out so you can fill their place because that doesn't come with blessing. But you want promotion you want goodness you want more you don't want to sit on the same level why then for religion are we satisfied sitting on the same level slipping you know my father gave an example once he says it's like flying in an aircraft and I thought I said dad what do you mean flying in an aircraft listen to what he says you have to keep flying if you stop your plane crashes Allahu Akbar you have to keep flying have you ever seen mid-air they just stop and say, pause for a moment. Have you seen that? It cannot happen because if the aircraft is flying, it has to keep moving forward. It can't reverse. I haven't seen planes reverse, subhanAllah. <laughs> and at the same time, I haven't seen them stop. It has to go forward. If it stops, what happens? It will come down, subhanAllah. So in the same way, you have to utilize your time in the air as a pilot to get to your destination without wasting time because your fuel is limited and perhaps you know you are governed by so many other factors the same applies in life if you do not progress and keep on flying and keep on covering more and more mileage you will not be able to continue on that level you will drop your altitude cannot be maintained when you have now stopped Allahu Akbar let's understand this the same applies to a man who has a business so you opened up a supermarket in the corner there, mashallah. And what happens? That one starts progressing. And you are having great success in your business. So next thing, there's another corner there, mashallah. You open another branch. It works. When that one works, you open a third one. Then you start thinking of crossing to another city. Then you start thinking of another country. And if you are sharp enough, you can have something across the globe. Why? Because one worked. The other one worked and I want to see this whole thing working forever and I want to progress. But how much money are you going to use in your life? Not even one tenth of what's going to come out of those shops. Do you agree? Not even one tenth. A man who's, for example, earned one billion dollars in his life. What did he spend? A few million, maybe. That's also if he was generous some people the more they have the stingier they become one brother told me i've got a shop in town you know when the poor people come they never ask for a discount but when a rich man comes he says hey what's your last price but brother take a look at that vehicle out there man and the other man who came on public transport told me how much does this cost he took the money out and carried on it's the rich sometimes who want more and more discount why is it i don't know i'm not a rich man alhamdulillah 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant barakah to all those who have wealth. Wallahi, it's not a bad thing, but it's just a bigger test. Wealth is not a bad thing. It's a bigger test. And sometimes fewer people pass the test. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the passing of our tests. So as we would like another branch and make a lot of money, we are only going to spend a fraction. When it comes to knowledge, with time, we will be spending maximum. And if we don't, we are losing. And why I raise this is because one of the points to be mentioned this afternoon is that we need to gauge our progress. And we will be able to understand how much progress we've made by looking into how well we've implemented what we've learned and how we have benefited others from the knowledge we have achieved. How did you benefit? Don't think, no, I'm just a small toy, you know. I can't give. No. I have seen beggars take out money from their pockets giving other beggars money. And that's when a tear rolled down my cheek. Today when I give one dollar, two dollars to a beggar on the street. I don't know if you have beggars here, but I think every country more or less should be. Uh, you might say, no, they're from outside. But wherever they're from, it's okay. <laughs> it's an opportunity to give wealth. So you see a wealthy man giving five dollars. And then you see that man giving one dollar. Who has given more? Who has given more? Wallahi, percentage-wise, the one from five who gave one has given out 20%. And the one from five million who's given out five has given out naught point naught 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 naught. I don't even know where the one fits in. Percent. So who gave more? That's why I say you have lots of knowledge. You have a bigger responsibility. Lots of knowledge. You have to share more. You have a bigger responsibility. Percentage wise, what you are giving is very small. But Alhamdulillah, Allah doesn't look at it that way. For as long as you've tried and you've given it maximum, Alhamdulillah. But if you have less knowledge, remember, don't think for a moment I cannot give. Look at that beggar whom I told you moments ago about. He had a little bit. He shared it with someone. What about us? We have a little bit of knowledge. Share it with your family. You know, about Salah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. What I have found beneficial regarding Salah is when you read your salah, obviously the men folk would read in the masjid, but if for some reason you are still at home, perhaps there is, the masjid is extremely far, you might be living in a place where there may not be masajid, or whatever the other reason is, you need to know. Even if you are at the masjid, you come home and read your sunnah. If you read your salah at home, properly in one place, and you read your salah in a way that your children are watching you, even the women folk, you know that this works. Your children, by the age of six months to a year, the minute they can crawl, they will start fulfilling salah without you having uttered one word. And you're already giving them because you've learned that the best way is to lead by example. So when you read salah every day, they will come and stand next to you. You know, if you are a, if you are a role model in your home, even to a small degree, your children will want to follow you. But when mom and dad are screaming at each other, nagging, swearing, you know, all sorts of things happening between mom and dad and child and everyone is playing the duck and the dive and so on. Like I said, Tom and Jerry, one comes in, one goes out. Subhanallah. If that is the relationship we have at home, then our children will be far away from the deen because they haven't had something to relate to. They haven't had some uniformity. A lot of new generation, when I say new generation, the younger generation, very lazy, no time management at all. Get up at 11 in the morning and what happens? We're just sitting, flicking, flicking, flicking. Next thing is PlayStation 2, 3. Then we hear about PlayStation 4. So we run to dad. Dad, there's a PlayStation 4. And as you walk into the market, you hear of the 5. You go back home. Dad, I need a top up. There's a 5. But that's what it's all about. Life. Then we, we are awake late at night on our computers. Allah protect us. There's disaster upon disaster. The young, the youth. Computers are being used for pornography. Computers are being used to interact with those whom you are not supposed to. Time wasting. The only thing that's going to happen is the breakage of hearts and, and the decay socially of environment. What will happen? If you have a relation with someone, for what? What is, what is it? You know, a lot of the times, and I've said this in the past, people use the word, I love you, just to hurt you. They don't know, and you don't know. And one of the two of you are very gullible. Before we used to say the women are gullible. Nowadays we say one of the two of you. Because we don't know. Allah safeguard us. Because just I love you. I love you. Everybody can say that. It's a, it's a waste of time. Translate it please with nikah. 